Thank you, Marta. We have uh, time for questions uh, at the end. So, uh, next speaker is uh, Phil Horsfall from uh, uh, Leicester University of Sanctuary. Uh, Phil has been working for the University of Leicester for nearly 30 years. He's chair of the University of Leicester Sanctuary Group and director. Phil told me that his wife, Emma, is actually the main inspiration for his uh, personal involvement with supporting refugees uh, and asylum seekers because uh, since 2015 she has been working tirelessly to support people stuck in camps uh, and outside them in Greece and surrounding countries. Uh, Phil, around 15 months ago, together uh, with others, uh, decided to work uh, towards uh, Leicester, becoming University of Sanctuary. And uh, they have recently achieved this status, uh, which was officially announced about uh, a month ago. So, and now I leave the stage to Phil, and he's going to talk more about uh, uh, Leicester University of Sanctuary. Thank you. Yeah, just before we begin, I'd just like to uh, thank all the panelists and particularly thank Ambrose for inviting me. I think everyone who comes into contact with Ambrose knows what a fantastic uh, job he does of bringing people together. And this is yet another example. Um, so I, I wanted to talk about um, why, why access is important, what challenges are faced, um, what work we're doing at Leicester and how I see us developing this, this work in the future. Of course, one of the disadvantages of being fifth is that, uh, that actually everybody has said everything that I was going to say, so I'm afraid you're going to have to sit here and listen to me repeating uh, many of the things that have uh, rightly been said by the, uh, the other people here. Um, Leicester uh, University um, has, um, was established in 1918 following uh, the end of the First World War. Um, the reason I mention this is, is, is twofold, I think it's a demonstration of why a university like Leicester should be supporting refugees and asylum seekers. Um, and also, um, I think a lot of the things that have been able to achieve, or we've been able to achieve in the last 15 months, is um, by linking it to, to uh, the centenary celebrations that the university is uh, going to be starting. Um, so as I say, some of these things about why access to education is important have al already been mentioned. Um, you know, I, I totally agree that it should be the right of everybody. It should not be dependent on um, of whether you've got money in your pocket. Um, universities kind of talk often a very good game about things like widening participation and offering opportunities to less privileged, but they're not always so willing to um, to kind of fund these things, um, but who, who needs this more than, than those that have kind of been forced to fled from awful situations and want to rebuild their lives? So if, you know, universities are not offering support to refugees and asylum seekers, then I would say who are they kind of offering uh, support to them? Um, so some of these challenges uh, that uh, sanctuary seeking uh, people face um, have already been mentioned, but I'll quickly run through them. Um, I think anybody who's travelled knows that language is always a barrier, so um, probably one of the biggest barriers if you're, you know, if you're, if you're moving to a completely different culture. Finance has been talked about a lot. I was, I was quite pleased I had this 1% figure, but somebody else has already beaten me to it, you know, by the <laughs> academics, honestly. Um, <laughs> The process, for me, seems to be uh, made uh, deliberately complicated, so I think it's, uh, you know, it's a good challenge to try and understand that. Um, paperwork has also been mentioned. You know, if, you're, um, if you're fleeing a, a war area, you're probably not thinking, where are my GCSE certificates and things <laughs> like that. Um, I think uh, we've touched upon this, but uh, often people who come over are traumatised when they arrive arrived here, and that's you know um, something that we need to consider. And I think we need to kind of fight against the um, us and them mentality uh, that has been uh, spread by those in the media. No, no offence. Not take. <laughs> um, and there's, you know, there can be, and we need to fight against this attitude of, you know, why are we helping them? Why aren't we kind of giving finance to us? So, um, 
Work being done at Leicester, so uh, I'm the director of the English Language Teaching Unit, um, and so I think in some ways, um, fortuitively, we kind of stumbled across something that was absolutely key to, to helping people, which is, which is language. Um, so, um, amongst the variety of things that we do are we support students who want to go to university to do what's been mentioned as pre-sessional programmes, these are uh, uh, programmes that give students access uh, to university. So I think we've uh, supported in the last 12 months something around close to 40 students have done these pre-sessional uh, programmes at different levels. And of course the big advantage of these programmes is they're not just simply language programmes but as, as also said earlier they support study skills and really prepare students uh, to, to, to start their degree programmes. Um, we support through language in other ways, um, so we currently run some free programmes uh, for those who want to go into the medical profession. Um, I mean, God, do we need more nurses and doctors, and there are nurses and doctors who are prevented from joining the National Health Service because they uh, don't have the necessary language qualification. So um, we're offering uh, free classes to uh, refugees and asylum seekers who, who want to get their level up uh, in what's called an OET test. Um, we offer free online support. So I've got I acquired acquired free of charge uh, a lot of licenses that um, means that anybody who writes to me and says I'm a refugee or an asylum seeker and I'd like to improve my language, not just English language, I can give a license to and they can access some pretty good free resources uh, online. Um, and I think finally with language, um, I think sometimes um, People want to kind of volunteer, and they do volunteer. It's fantastic, and uh, you know, but they've not necessarily got a background in teaching. So one thing that we've tried to do is offer support through training and resources to those that are already working with um, with, with students. Um, finance has been talked about. Um, so um, yeah, we also have some scholarships. Of course, there will never be enough, and of course, we will continue to try to get uh, more of them. Um, I think the important thing about the home versus international fees is that um, if they uh, awarded uh, home fee status, then there is more likelihood that they will get some kind of scholarship from elsewhere because, you know, it's still quite rightly a ton of money and I also don't agree with it, but it's a, it's a slightly smaller ton of money than if it was yeah. international fees. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, uh, other things that we've tried to do is to try to offer just uh, some funding in terms of daily expenses. I mean, things that might not seem very much, um, like bus passes. We've managed to access some money to offer bus passes to support students uh, to come in. Um, and also, um, what will you know that there was uh, not so long ago a strike at the university um, and um, money was taken from those that were on strike. And there was an agreement with the student union that uh, some of that money sh should be given back to support widening participation. So as part of that, we managed to get quite a significant amount of money to support um, the and, uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, keep them coming, I say, yeah. Um, okay, um, so I mentioned understanding the, the process. So one of the things that we're trying to do at, at the university is we try to bring together groups to not only from within the university but from outside the university who can help you know bring all that information together about what the process is as i said earlier i think it's deliberately made uh, as difficult it seems to be deliberately made as difficult as possible so as a university the more we can do to make uh, that understandable uh, the better so we've organized a couple of events as part of refugee weeks um, to um, uh, bring groups together who can explain the whole kind of process. Um, we also uh, we also want to attend national, or we do attend national and international conferences to try and um, uh, increase our knowledge and understanding of what's going on because it's difficult for us to kind of understand things sometimes. So as an example of that, we've got somebody from our admissions department who is a champion in our university in admissions. 
um, who is going to attend a, a conference in Portugal in January. And why wouldn't you run away for that, really? You know? <laughs> um, uh, part, we're also going to have what we're uh, going to call a room of sanctuary at the university, which um, will be an area that we're going to keep information in, that we can have people come in and, and, and use to sort of talk to those that are studying with us to tell them what the next step uh, is as well. Um, and I've also uh, given some time to a couple of my colleagues to work specifically on um, on sanctuary area, areas. So one of the results of that is we have a rather, well I think, a really good website with lots of information, not just about what we're doing, but about what others are doing. Um, okay, I, I just want to move on, because I'm just aware, aware of, of the time. Um, we seem to be, we've talked a lot about um, what universities can do for refugees and asylum seekers. I'd just like to talk a little bit about what they can bring to, to us as well. So I mentioned that we've had something like 40 students go on our pre-sessional courses. Um, and this has really added to our pre-sessional courses. Um, it's, it's added diversity, it's added a new way of looking at things, it's offered a different language experience. Um, I'm sure um, it's enlightened some of the normal students who come on our programmes. Um, but you know, we're now in a situation, you know, 15 months after we started doing this, where instead of having um, 10 Chinese and a Saudi Arabian in our class, we've got um, 10 Chinese, a Saudi Arabian, a couple of Sudanese, a Syrian, you know, all sorts of different things, and, and it's fantastic. And um, you know, I don't know if it's just my imagination, but the whole kind of environment of where I work just seems to be more, more alive and, you know, lots more English going on as well. So that's one example. Um, another example is um, we worked with the Red Cross so that some of the, uh, some of the refugees and asylum seekers could do some training to talk about their experiences. And I think this is a two-way thing. It gives them an opportunity to talk to an audience like this about, you know, what they've been through and it's good for people around the university to hear those, those voices as well. Um, and I think uh, it, it's, it's important to think that there's not a one-size-fits-all thing about it. There's not one thing that universities uh, can and should be doing. There's a whole variety of things. You're going to hear about uh, MOOCs, in, in, I'm sure, in, in, in moments, yeah. Um, I think, uh, you know, of course there's degree programmes. I think another thing that we've kind of stumbled across a little bit that I think will prove to be really important is distance learning programmes. So at the moment we've got one or two distance learning programmes that are being offered. The reason I think these are so important is because as we all know, um, asylum seekers you know, don't know necessarily where they're going to be next week. You know, they might be moved to another city, they could be deported. Um, but if they're doing distance learning, then they can sort of take that education uh, with them. So we're really kind of excited about building up the, the number of distance learning programmes uh, that, that uh, could be offered. Um, yeah, the us and them mentality... Have I still got two minutes? Am I OK? Yeah. The, the us and men, them mentality, um, I think... Well... My summary of this, and you may have seen this already, but uh, the University of Reading, um, about sort of six months ago, said the following. We've had feedback over the last week that some people are unhappy with our plan to offer up to 14 scholarships to refugees living in the local area. To these people, we would like to say, tough, jog on. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd like to say that, but I'd also <laughs> like to say, um, you know, we need to get positive messages out there as well. You know, those successes that there are, and there might not be enough of them, but we need to get those messages out. So that's one of the things that we want to do at Leicester, is we've already got some great stories of um, students who started uh, doing free classes with City of Sanctuary, they've come on and done our pre-sessional and now they're doing their degree programmes and we need to get that message out there um, that there are lots of positive stories. Um, 
So very briefly, the, the, the future, because I always said that getting the University of Sanctuary Award would be great, but it's just the beginning as far as uh, we're concerned. Um, so one of the big things that we're trying to do, what I think that needs doing is there needs to be a more coordinated response across the university. Universities need to come together. Uh, sadly, there are scholarships available that are just not being taken just because of lack of information, and, and that, that just you know seems, seems crazy. Uh, to me, so we, we've sort of set up a, 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 a GISC mail account that most universities have joined uh, with, you know, getting information out there. There are conferences coming up and working with people you know, it will, will be great. Um, so I just want to finish with what I think the kind of top five things uh, that the University of Leicester have, have managed to, to do to help overcome these challenges. Um, the first one is this English language support. I would say that as the director of the English language. Yeah. Um, the second thing is the, the, the distance learning programs, and I think that's you know a real good opportunity. You know, and let's be honest, it's something we can say to the university that doesn't cost you as much as a campus-based thing, and so you know it, it's it's easier. Um, I think another uh, important thing which is demonstrated here is that we've worked very closely with groups in, in the community and will continue to do so. Um, and then I think it's really important that we've understood that, uh, that we see sanctuary seekers not only as receivers but as givers as well and we want to look for more opportunities. I know there's always problems around using voluntary work but volunteering opportunities we've created some of them. Um, through our Languages at Leicester programme, we've got a couple of volunteers working in those classrooms and I think that's great opportunities to them. And, yeah, f finally, um, I would say, you know, helping to get universities and other educational establishments working together. So I just want to finish with one more thing. These are the kind of things that come into my mailbox. Um, so, um, my name is, it doesn't really matter, Study Plus Manager at Bloomsbury Institute, we, uh, Centre for Student Wellbeing, Engagement and Success. We'll be launching an access course to higher education for refugees in January 2019. I have designed a five-week access course raising awareness of how to apply for HEIs in the UK and the steps involved. This will then be followed by a 20-hour IELTS preparation course to be run at our institute. I've been working closely with RSN, Refuge, Star and Compass Classic, etc. What a great program, you know, and you know, if we could start offering this all over the country, then absolutely fantastic because, you know, at the moment, it seems to me, correct me if I'm wrong, that too many of these, well, not too many, but most of these things seem to be based in London, and people have to go down to London to do them, and how crazy is it that a small amount of money that refugees and asylum seekers have if they're able to use that to go to a program in London when they could be doing it in Leicester or Durham or, or, or wherever. Okay, thanks very much.